ESG stands for environmental, social and governance. The idea is that companies that run their businesses mindful of these three principles will be better for society. Some people even think they'll be more profitable too. ESG has become a racket because the definitions are so flexible. Every company claims to be ESG. Index providers like Dow Jones and S&P have figured out that ESG indices are a new source of revenue. To show you how meaningless ESG is, look at the Dow Jones Sustainability Index. It includes defense contractors Lockheed Martin and Northrop Grumman. These companies make weapons systems, fighter jets and bombs. Their products are designed to blow up people and things. We need companies like that for our national security, but how do they get into a sustainability index? Do they make green bombs? If defense companies can be ESG, then every company is ESG. And if every company is ESG, then none are. At SL Advisors, we invest in midstream energy infrastructure. That's pipelines, storage, and processing. We sit between the producers of oil and gas and the customers, which are often utilities, export terminals, or refineries. If you're interested in learning more about the energy sector and interest rates, then don't forget to subscribe and follow us on LinkedIn and Twitter. Our handles are in the description boxes below. The only meaningful element of ESG is fund flows. Because money has been flowing into ESG funds, like BlackRock's ESGU for some years, it modestly outperformed the market. Only modestly, because its holdings are almost the same as the S&P 500. Returns are 99% correlated. But in the past year, ESGU has been lagging the market, and increasingly, you have people saying the ESG emperor has no clothes. Stuart Kirk is HSBC's head of responsible investing. He's evidently had enough of this ESG nonsense, including predictions of climate catastrophe, because he recently gave a career-ending presentation complaining about the nut jobs predicting the end of the world. The constant reminder that we are doomed, the constant reminder that within decades it's all over. And indeed, Sharon said, we are not going to survive. And indeed, no one ran from the room. In fact, most of you barely looked up from your mobile phones at the prospect of non-survival. He gave some useful statistics showing that climate change is unlikely to be a huge economic hit because its effect will be spread over several decades, over such a long time that even if there is a hit to global GDP, future generations will not notice. Stuart Kirk was suspended by HSBC for expressing a perfectly reasonable but non-PC view. I think he's great. The SEC is now looking into ESG claims made by fund managers about their investment strategies. ESG is so wonderfully flexible, it's like saying I'm the nicest fund manager, so you should invest with me. S&P recently dropped Tesla from their ESG index, which sounds surprising because surely Tesla's whole brand is about the energy transition. S&P said Tesla's peers had improved their ESG scores, so Tesla is now relatively less ESG than some other companies. If you own Tesla, should you really sell it because of that? Elon Musk naturally called out ESG as a scam, and he's pretty much right. Recently, the head of Germany's top asset management firm, DWS, resigned over allegations of greenwashing. This means he overstated the portion of assets invested using ESG. He should have said they have the nicest employees instead. It's about as measurable as ESG and less likely to cause trouble. If anybody lost money because of this, I think it's their own fault for treating ESG like a financial performance metric. In fact, ESG by definition has to reduce performance because it's an additional constraint on your portfolio. Constraints reduce risk-adjusted returns. And if ESG does add to excess returns, to put it in terms of the capital asset pricing model, if ESG adds alpha, then it should be applied to all strategies. But it only beats the market when assets are flowing into ESG strategies. Take that away and there's nothing there. That's why BlackRock's ESGU fund looks almost exactly like the S&P 500. They don't want to risk much underperformance. 
Most money managers understand this, but too many have pandered to an unsophisticated investor base who think ESG companies beat the market. As ESG gets deservedly discredited, you'll see companies gradually de-emphasize it. Many of them will be relieved that they can focus on more tangible measures of performance. If you want to invest in companies that really are doing good, you should hold US natural gas. Companies like Williams or Chenier because companies like these and others have played an important role in reducing US CO2 emissions. And we've replaced coal with natural gas. We've made our electricity cleaner with less risk of global warming. Coal to gas switching is mostly how America has reduced emissions over the past decade. Solar panels and windmills have generated lots of media, but not had much impact. Now, through growing exports of natural gas, America is helping the rest of the world to lower their emissions too. They're following America's lead. If you're a diehard ESG fan, you'll be happy to know that natural gas pipeline companies are included in BlackRock's ESGU ETF. If you're interested in tangible results, US natural gas might be the most impactful sector you could choose. We manage investment products to profit from the outcomes I've discussed. To find out more about what we're thinking, sign up for our bi-weekly blog at sladvisors.com. We always love to hear from you, so if you have any comments or blog ideas, please leave them down below. I'm Simon Lack.